popping everyone, Adma here. Okay, so it's been a while since I actually made a video like this. Don't mind the echo, it's really the best I could do. But um, I just had to make this kind of video because the phone I want to talk about is a somewhat special phone. So if you were in the tech community, two years ago, 2018, then you'd have heard about Pocophone F1. That was like the probably the best budget phone ever. It had Snapdragon 845, a liquid cooling system, very fast RAM and very fast storage for just 300 bucks. So after the Pocophone F1, everyone got a lot of, everyone was, Everyone was hyped about the phone and everyone wanted to see a continuation. Then 2019 came and went, nothing was heard from Poco. Then 2020 came and Poco said that they were coming back after they became an independent company from Xiaomi. Then they released the Poco X2, which it, it wasn't there. That's just the truth of the matter. It wasn't there. So when we finally heard that Poco F2 was coming, a lot of hype came with the phone. And that's what I'm here to talk about. So the Poco phone F2, these are basically my thoughts about the phone. Now, the first thing I'll talk about is the price. They priced it for around 499 euros for the base version. Okay, you may say that's cool pricing for what's inside, which is what I'll still get to, but I'm not fine with the pricing because this pricing was in euros, right? And you could say, Odema, you said that it was priced at 299 in dollars as opposed to 499. But then the problem is, the Pocophone F1 started at $299. The Pocophone F2 starts at 499 euros. Then if you convert to dollars, you're almost getting almost $500 in price. So that's a price bump of about $200. And what are you getting inside? You're getting the latest Snapdragon 865, of course. It has UFS 3.1 storage very fast RAM and a revolutionary cooling system. So when you hear all these, you're like, okay, the price point is a bit justified, right? So let's actually talk about that price because that's my main annoyance about the phone. That's basically what I want to talk about. So I'm going to try to look at the Pocophone F2 in the way of what could Poco have done to actually make the Poco phone? The first thing that I think they could have done is actually not use a glass back. Now, the Poco phone F1, or rather Poco in general, is not a phone for flash and pizzazz. Like, it's a phone that you just have for what is inside, not for the beauty of the outside. And I was very fine with that at first. When the Pocophone F1 came out, it was a plastic back, plain colors, I mean, red, black, you, you just had to like it. But then, yes, I like the multiple colors that the Pocophone F2 comes with, but a glass back, I'm not really a fan of. It would have been much better if it was a plastic back, which would then cut down the cost of the phone, making it more reasonable to actually give it a lower price point. That's one thing. Of course, we know that because the Snapdragon 865 is within this phone, it's actually what's causing the price bump because the 5G modem that comes with the Pocophone F2 is mandatory. So it means no matter the version of the Pocophone F2 you're getting, you're getting 5G along with it, whether your region supports 5G or not. I understand that this also is causing a price bump, so I won't talk much about that. Then another thing I wanted to talk about was the display. So 
It's a 6.67 inch screen, full HD plus AMOLED screen, glory be to God. It's better than that IPS LCD screen that we had in the Pocophone F1. Even though the IPS LCD screen was good, AMOLED is still better. And then if you're running Android 10 on top of this with dark mode and everything, you definitely need to get an AMOLED screen. So I'm very fine with this. Now, I was reading up a lot of articles on this phone. Then I read an article on GSM Arena that said that the Pocophone F1 does not support any form of high refresh rate screen. And I'm like, Nigga, what? like, you position yourself as a flagship killer. And in order to be a flagship killer, you have to give flagship features for a lower than expected price which is what the Redmi K20 did, and also what the Pocophone F1 did. So not seeing a high refresh rate screen here is really surprising and annoying. For me, it's not a deal breaker. I've not yet used any phone that has a higher refresh rate, so I can't really say whether I can live without it or not. But from the experiences, or rather from the testimonies of other people, I don't think it's something that I would really like to skip out on. But then, if we leave the refresh rate for a little bit, they also praised the gaming power of this phone. It's running the Snapdragon 865, which is the same thing that every Samsung Galaxy S20 phone is running, also what the OnePlus 8 is running. And they say that it has better gaming performance than those two phones. Okay, that's cool. But then these two phones that you're actually comparing yourselves to, both have 120 hertz screens. I mean, uh, I gave most of these rants on Twitter, which if you're not following, you definitely have to follow. But let me just stop there. Another thing that they said was that the phone has a 180 hertz touch sampling rate as opposed to 240 hertz. I mean, there are really a lot of features that I was expecting in the Pocophone F2 that are just missing, and it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Oh well, I've already talked about the pricing. The battery on this phone, I'm pretty impressed with, 4,700 milliamp hours. So there isn't really much to say there. And the specs are, pretty much what you'd expect from the Pocophone F2. I'll leave them on the screen for you to see. And I mean, yes, the Pocophone F2 is a good phone. It does most of the things well that we know the Pocophone to actually do well, but I feel like it's a bit disappointing. It's just my opinion. But let me know in the comments what you think. Is the Pocophone F2 a good enough phone for you? Or will you consider buying another phone? like the Nubia Red Magic, which, in my opinion, is actually pretty cool. Well, that's been it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace.